Hi, this is Brad Thor, author of the new audiobook, Full Black. And hi, I'm Armin Schultz. I'm an actor and a narrator of the new Brad Thor audiobook. What other than once you get your idea, you know, you get your idea in the shower, um, you know, then you've got this great idea. Then what's your process for actually, you know, I mean, I'm not a writer. I'm an actor, so I take what people have written. What's your process for actually writing the book itself? Well, to get the book kicked off, I have to turn in an outline of some sort to my editor. And I try to keep that outline as narrow as possible. Robert Frost was famous for saying, no joy in the writer, no joy in the reader. No surprise in the writer, no surprise in the reader. So I tried once. I'm friendly with Dan Brown, and Dan once gave me a very, very exclusive peek into the outline he had done for Da Vinci Code, mm -hmm. and it was incredibly extensive. And I thought, oh, well, you know, maybe I should try this. And I outlined a book, and it took all of the wind out of my sails. It took all of the excitement. All of that surprise, as Robert Frost talked about, it was gone from me. I will do an outline where I know, okay, this guy's got two bullets in him. He's on this side of Bern in Switzerland, and he has to be at the train station in 10 minutes with the briefcase in his hand, and I don't know how he's going to get there. And that's how I know I'm in the zone, is when I'm having the experience writing the book that the reader is having reading it. When my palms get sweaty and when my heart starts pounding, that, to me, tells me I'm doing something right. I like to paint myself into a corner as a writer, paint my characters into corners, and see how they'll get out. So during the day, my goal is to do about 2,500 words, which is about five single-spaced pages. And it normally takes me all day. I'll be in my office in the morning, and I won't leave till it's done. This is not a Hemingway situation where I'm out fishing at noon. <laughs> Uh, yeah, people think it's work. People, yeah, it's actually work. It's work. As a matter of fact, I work harder than most of my friends when I write these. But it's such a fantastic career. I really love doing uh, what I'm doing, and there is a lot of art to it. There is that kind of trusting that you're going to get the story out there on paper. But to quote another famous author, Jack London uh, was famous for saying, "You can't wait for inspiration. You have to go after it with a club." And that's true, especially if you're doing one Scott Harvath thriller every year. Right. And uh, I've even done, actually, in the last year, I've done two since I've kind of done a parallel series. So I've right, the, the, uh, the Athena it? Project. The Athena Project girls. Yep. Yeah, Kept yeah. La the... ladies, women. Ladies, exactly. Exactly. They're, they're great. They're great. Thank well, you. I was going to say one of the other pluses to your books that I love, too, in reading them is is all the locations you put people in. That's really fascinating. They go to you know different cities around the world where all these things happen, and the the color that you bring to those cities and, you know, the spice of life that's in those cities that's fed into the books is another great thing. Thank you. And that's, I know you enjoy traveling and so do I. And I think the details, whether they be, you know, the way the smoke hangs in the air in a Parisian cafe right. or the way a particular weapon works, I think the details are the bedrock of a great thriller. And I think when we're doing audio books, I get those details down, but it's, it's the voice, as we've talked about, the voice you bring to the characters and how unique you make each one. You know, I, I said to you earlier, Armin, that I've gotten so much great feedback on your work and what you've done with these audiobooks. Is there anything particularly, any fan feedback that you've received on the audiobooks that you're, you're proud of or you think is, you know, noteworthy? Some people have come up to me actually after shows at the stage door of plays that I've been in, and they'll come up and they'll they'll want to meet you briefly because they've just seen you in a show, and they'll also say, oh, and by the way, you know, I I, I listen to the Brad Thor books that you do, and that always is, is brings a big smile to my face because I'm like, out of you know how many people I know, there's a big audio listening um, audience out there. But you never really quite know who listens to them. There's a lot of guys who are travel the road a lot and stuff like that. I met one guy, and he said, uh, I'm on airplanes all the time, and I got hooked on the Brad Thor characters, and I wait for the next one because I listen to them when I'm on the road. And that's cool. I met him backstage at a show. So it's been fascinating to me when people come up to me and say that they like what I do, but more importantly, that they, they like the characters that you've written, and they're, they're really into the books. So well, that... that's, uh, that's nice. Uh, several of the, um, the parents where we've got uh, our children in school love the audiobooks. They're big travelers, and so they listen to the books on audio. And it's funny because one of the moms, uh, one of my wife's girlfriends, said, you know, I listened to the first one recently. 
And boy, that narrator just, he, he sounds exactly like I picture Scott Harvest. Oh, that's great. Rugged and handsome. And my wife said, Oh, we had dinner with Armin when he was in Chicago, and he's just as you imagine sounding. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, that's that's great. Thanks a lot, honey. I'm like, you know, it took a lot to write that book. You know, Armin. Yeah, let's. let's I just let's voice talk it exactly. Well, are you are you a fan of audiobooks? I mean, yourself. I mean, obviously, you're writing for the page, but is that something that you knew about, or you had to listen to? Obviously, because we're doing these, or you know, is that something that you also enjoy? No, I, I am, and I have actually become a. a very big purchaser of audiobooks now because I'm doing a lot more driving. We've really rolled back. We've got two little children. Right, I knew that. Air travel has been such a hassle Correct. Um, that we've really scaled it back. So we're spending a lot of time in the car. And what made the difference for us is, uh, and this is very interesting, is we've got a DVD system built into the car now, and the kids have the cordless headset. So we're able to put on whatever we want while right. we're driving. And so we've gone full bore into the audiobooks. But what's been fun for me is to go back and listen again to the earlier books that you've done for me, because I can't go back and read my book. Right. I I can't, because I will find a million things that I will want to change. I I can't, but when I listen to the books and I listen to you doing them, I'm actually able to disengage from wanting to be in a creative role to just being in a reader role, if you will. Right, to go for the ride. Right. And, and I'm, I'm there for the ride. Yeah. And it, it, it's a neat thing for an author to be able to kind of uncouple himself from the work and just sit back and enjoy it. And that's one of the neat things that audiobooks that you've done of my books has given me. But, you know, listen, I, there's a ton of great material out there in the audio world. And privately, I enjoy listening to the books with you. And then when I'm out with my wife and we're doing these long car trips, it's great to download something or buy something. I'm still a big supporter of the uh, store. Uh, near my house, and I like to go in and just say, all right, you know, these three look great. I've heard about this one, and let me just grab them all. And then there's a bonus. My kids look for you, Armand, on the back. My (laughs) kids in the store know your picture, and they will pick you out and say, Daddy, let's get this one, because Mr. Schultz is doing it. That's great. As usual, it has been fantastic speaking with you, and I'm very much looking forward to your recording of the audio version of Full Black. Oh, it's totally my pleasure. I, uh, I love doing these books every year. I look forward to them. Uh, I love chatting with you. We, I'm sure we could talk for another couple of hours. It's great. He's a great character. I, I love your books. I'm so glad we had this uh, chance to catch up and uh, talk about uh, Scott Harvath and the upcoming Full Black. <laughs> ¶¶